So this is not exactly a video that I really want to do because <laughs> any other tournament professional would just wipe that from their memory and continue going on, but seeing as I'm a YouTuber. And I want to be as honest and truthful with you guys as possible. Um, I feel like I should give you a little bit of an explanation as to what happened because it's interesting and a lot was learnt on that day. So first day I was nine over through 10 holes, um, ended up losing a ball and NRing. Second day I shot 14 over for one round. Um, it was just horrif horrific golf. At the same time, I had Fraser on the back, so Fraser Beach, who, who's been watching the channel for a very long time, he said it's almost like watching Jacqueline Hyde. I have five holes where I'm playing tour golf standard, and then the next five holes will be absolute shambles. And the thing is, when you're on a golf course like that, and the greens are running at 13, they're pretty hard. Um, it was bouncy around the greens, long rough. It was like rough and then fringe. So you couldn't like trundle it along that like you could hear at East Devon. Um, when you missed the green, it was so penalizing. Like it is at every golf course um, on tour, but this was particularly difficult and the score showed that. Um, I think only five people broke par out of a field of 90, which is almost unheard of. Uh, scores were so high. I was the only person who actually entered on the first day and played in the second day, solely because I just wanted to go out there and experiment and see what was going on. I took a much different attitude on the second day than I did on the first day. My game plan going into the tournament was way too conservative. Um, I think recently I've been focusing too much on not trying to shoot a high number um, rather than actually going out there and trying to make birdies and shoot under par. I think because being a YouTuber you become so results focused, which is completely wrong with any sport. You need to be action focused and, result and driven by make having a good result, if that makes sense. So focus on what you're in control of. Um, and making videos like this don't really help. Um, like what Bob Rotella talks in his book about the subconscious self-image and preserving that. And that's why golfers are very good at making excuses when they tap down spike marks after a putt if they've missed it. And you see them doing it now, even though they're allowed to tap down spike marks, they'll still do it because they'll use any excuse to preserve the image they have of themselves in their head. So every time I do one of these videos, it just sort of like damages my self-confidence a little bit, whereas other people don't have to go through that. And I think through doing that over the past couple of years, I've become results driven because I have to report my result to you guys. I don't have to, but I want to report it because that's what the whole channel is about. Anyway, going back to having a way too conservative game plan, um, I mean, I was adding a thousand yards onto the golf course. On the first day, uh, my game plan was to hit iron off pretty much like every par five, um, which is just stupid. I mean, there was maybe one or two where that was necessary to not get yourself into trouble um, because it was almost impossible to hold the fairways because of the slope and how narrow they were. I was just trying to play way too safe and not going out there like I used to and playing instinctively and just playing golf. Um, and that's another thing, it was, I mean, I'm, pl I'm still out there and I'm playing golf swing rather than actually playing golf. I'll bring the scores up on screen now. I mean, you can see it was a ridiculously tough test to golf. If you miss the green, you're just trying to get it within, in general, especially with short side yourself, you're trying to get it within sort of like 20 foot, 25 foot to give yourself um, a 5% chance. Look at par and just lag it up really and make a bogey and limit the damage. Um, but a lot of the time when you're short-siding yourself, um, a f you know, a five on a par three is likely. So it's, it's difficult. It also gives you a lot more respect for the guys on tour and around, around the greens especially. If you look at Beth Page and the speed of the greens there and how thick the rough was, I mean, it's six inches long at Beth Page, so it's like, it's like that. And the greens were just as quick as it was at the Shire this week. They're just trying to flop it out literally just on the green and it just keeps on rolling like it's on glass. It's a different, it's a different game and it's so much more penalizing. Any little facet of your game which is off is gonna get penalized and you're gonna drop more than one shot. Oh, I've got really bad hay fever. Ugh. That's why I played bad this week. <laughs> just had really bad hay fever. Couldn't see a thing. Eyes were gone, nose is gone, hands are gone, game over. So par, par, par start. I thought, okay, pretty steady start. My goal was to be a little bit more aggressive and not so um, 
protective if you like off the tee go out there to actually shoot a decent score rather than just trying to shoot a respectable score on the fourth hole pins front left and i've i've missed it left because i was trying to play instinctively rather than playing golf swing um i thought okay well if i go back to playing instinctively i'm feeling a draw here so i'll hit a draw forgetting that for the past eight months i've been changing my swing to exit left and hit a fade I set up for that fade shot and I hit a pull draw, miss it left of the green. Um, I go up there, didn't find my ball, go back to the tee, third one in the trees left. Again, exactly the same shot, wondering why it's gone left. It's because of my alignment's completely off. The shot shape was perfect, the amount of moved in the air was perfect, the strike was good, but my alignment has been for the shot I've been trying to hit for the past eight months. So, anyway, pull golf shot in the trees have to take an unplayable chip it out and thinking just get it on the green and two putt keeps trundling off before you know it i've made an eight anyway i brush it off i think is what it is eight five over now through three after making three steady pars and hitting some good golf shots on the first hole i stiffed it to about eight feet and you know even though it's the second round i'd have an ard you know, I'm still feeling, as everyone does on the first day, a little bit nervous. Not as much as the first day, but I was. Um, and I, I, I knock an eight iron to like eight feet to a back left pin. One of the best shots I've hit all week. Anyway, so after the eight on the, on the fourth, I go three iron, straight down the middle, perfect shot. Four iron, straight onto the green, perfect shot. It's literally like an inch off the fringe. And then bin the 25 foot putt for eagle. And I'm sat there and I'm thinking, I've just made an eight. And then I just literally flushed two long irons and drained a putt for eagle. Continued to plod it round. And as you can see, I had like three doubles, a triple and a quintuple bogey. The main thing for me here, although the greens were ridiculously quick, my putting was probably the best it's been on quick greens. I hold more footage than I ever have done on greens that quick. Um, but it was just the visualization in my mind, seeing the ball land that short and still running out with the short game, I find very, very difficult to envision. You know, I see the ball pitching halfway towards the pin and having a little bit of check and then just sort of like slowing up dead next to the hole, but these would just go 15 foot by. No matter how hard I tried, I couldn't make myself hit it short enough. So instead of having what are normally, you know, in between three and six foot putts for par with making up and downs, I'd be having like 15 foot putts for par, which you're now sort of thinking, well, you just kind of want to cozy it up to the hole rather than being positive. Um, so it's another, it's a completely different mindset over those par putts, which led to more bogeys. Another thing as well, if I did have a downhill chip, you know, I'm trying to land it so short on the fringe, sometimes I would literally just, I'd overcommit to it and it would, because the rough's cut so tight to the fringe, it's literally this much fringe and then rough like probably about that high, maybe four inches, five inches, something like that. Very, very, very sticky grass, not like this grass. I think it might have been like bent grass. You, you miss the shot by six or seven inches and it just stays in the rough and you're like, brilliant. Now I'm trying to make up and down with pretty much the same shot for a bogey. And before you know it, you've made like another double out of nowhere. Um, you might have just missed the green like 10 foot left. You know, it's down to so many, so many different factors. Uh, our game's just nowhere near where it needs to be. Um, that coupled with, uh, when I say my game, I don't even mean, I don't even mean physically. I think I stand next to players on the range and I hit the golf ball just as well as the majority of the pros there. Um, the, the main thing which is not there at the moment is in between the two ears. It's just not my strategy when it comes to golf. My thinking is not like it used to be. Um, it's changed. It's become more um, more protective, and that needs. That's the main thing which I need to focus on now. Um, is changing that mindset and becoming more aggressive and actually going out there and trying to win tournaments rather than just trying to shoot a respectable score because a respectable score gets you just as much money as shooting a hundred a hundred would so it's really kind of and my golf i need to become more like conig get the driver out and just bomb it everywhere
That is true. It's pretty much what it needs to needs to become like. I need to be a lot more aggressive. I need to learn to hit the driver. Um, another reason I was going into the tournament planning to be conservative was because I'm struggling with my driver. That's not the attitude I should have. I should be thinking I need to work on my driver so that I'm able to use it in the tournament to give myself an advantage because distance is the main strength of my game. Like I can hit the ball a very long way. That's something I need to take into a tournament and use. That's an advantage I have over the field. Um, and I'm not using that advantage. So that's one, that's the biggest thing which needs to be addressed at the moment is, um, is driving. I need to get my driving accuracy up and I need to be, um, I mean, the goal is to be hitting just high fades, almost move to like a, a Brooks Kepka style golfer with the driver and then just play very instinctively with the irons. Um, but to do that, I'm not going to make many swing changes. I'm now just going to focus on playing golf instinctively, freely, not worrying about it. Um, anyway, I know there's probably going to be a lot of people who comment on this video who say that 86 is a terrible score and that I'm probably never going to make it at golf. But I would like to see your know, average 10 handicap go there in those conditions and shoot below 100. It was, it was rough. You know, it's four odd European tour players there. One of them withdrew. Um, a Jamie Abbott who shot six under on the first day, he played one of the best rounds of his life to shoot that. It was um, it was tough test to golf. It was a very, very tough test to golf. Um, you can tell by the scores as well, looking down the leaderboard, um, you know, two over par would get you in the top 10. It, I think it was tied ninth or something, two over. So it was just it was just ridiculously hard. That's unheard of on Jamaica Tour. Some very good standard. You have players like James Heath, Jamie Abbott, um, some very, very, very good golfers there. And I know a lot of you guys who watch the channel are I think we did a test back along. The average handicap that watches the channel is 10. I know there's also a lot of pros who watch the channel who the majority of would probably understand the situation um, and sort of how tough it is and how fine the margins are in golf. Anyway, I want to thank Fraser Beach for cutting in, mate. Thank you so much for doing that. You kept my head screwed firmly on and my clubs firmly in my bag and all intact and nothing snapped. So thank you, mate, for that. We're going to have a game soon, do a bit of filming, hopefully get him on the bag again. You were um, really good. Actually, I think that's another reason I putted so well during the week, especially my pace putting, was because um, very, very structured on the putting green before he we went out. He had me set up with you know different distances, etc., which I do do every now and again. But when you've got someone else setting it up for you, it takes a lot of stress off. And it was just a little bit more structured. So my pace putting was good. Um, I hold a 25-foot putt for bogey on the first hole so the scary this, I don't know this, the scariest thing at the moment is that like the more I play and the more things like this happen that the more obsessed I'm getting with it again I mean I literally I got straight back so I drove I played in the morning drove four hours back um, got back at like five had food I went straight to the range at six o'clock in the evening and hit 50 drivers trying to hit that fade I'm glad I did I sort of uh, I maybe picked up on a couple of things but that obsession for it is really starting to come back now and I'm going to be playing a lot of golf this month so I'm looking forward to challenging myself around the different courses I'm still not sure what I do with regards to like tournament reviews and stuff like this because I don't know whether it does my game like any good what would you rather see me do any high level golfer would never report this to a camera it would just be wiped clean under the slate gone and forgotten again in the preservation of um, confidence really and the image that you have of yourself and that self-belief. I have to lay it all out to you guys. Like, I don't know whether that's what's best for my golf, but at the same time, I want to do what's best by you guys, the viewers, because that's like the whole point of this, documenting the entire journey of the human experiment is what it's called now. I've changed it from the journey to the human experiment. But it is, you know, I, I, don't, I, I know that not doing these would be best for my golf. Um, because you're just re-ingraining those thoughts and those memories in, which is not a good thing. What do you think I should do? Do you think I should maybe just do a little bit on Instagram or do you think I should do like a full on review every time like this? One thing that is good I must say is that it puts me under, it puts me under extra pressure um, and that long term can only be a good thing. At least I'm getting used to it early. Um, mind you, I've been under 
plenty of pressurized situations in my life, but it, it constantly keeps me under pressure. It's definitely an added pressure. I didn't think it was before, but it definitely is an added pressure having, you know, you've got 23,000 subscribers there like, waiting to hear how you've got on. Um, it's an added pressure. So yeah, it's just an interesting one. I don't know. Anyway, onwards and upwards, quitting is never an option. 40 years left in my career yet. So I reckon I got, at the end of the day, I've got 40 years left in my career. Let's say I win, let's say I win like one major a year around my peak. Maybe I'm gonna have 20 years when I'm at my peak, I reckon from 28 until 48. If I win one major a year, that's 20 majors, I've overtaken Jack. So, you know, I think, uh, I think I'm still in a, in, in a very good position and uh, it's, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm in really good shape. Thank you all for watching and supporting and actually all the positive feedback because I thought when I posted on Instagram I was going to get a load of shite. I did from one person but um, he's blocked now because he keeps on making accounts to troll me. It literally, I don't know who has that much time. He kept on giving me abuse so I blocked him. He created a new account, blocked him again, created another account, another account and like gave it different names. I made three different Instagram profiles just so he can post negative comments on there and like those are the people which you do not <laughs> you do not take advice from like there's a lot of critics out there um one of them actually i mean fraser's given me uh, enough sh enough shit over the over the past like year or so um and that's why i had him on the bag because he not so much a critic but he 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 what's the word he makes me question whether what i'm doing is is right rather than going on there and being like you're rubbish you're never going to make it that's never going to happen and that like, phrase has been through it with his tennis career um which is really interesting to pick his brains on as well um so yeah anyway i'm rambling on let's get this video over and done with thank you all very very much for watching i'm off to france in five days time I've got some massive videos coming for you playing three courses so i'm going to challenge myself around those three courses and see what we can shoot over the next few days before that trip, I'm just gonna be practicing bombing driver, literally bombing driver everywhere. And when I go to France, I'm gonna go low, low. If you haven't already, mind you, scores like that, you probably don't wanna, but if you, know, if you want, you can subscribe to the channel. Um, you don't have to, but it'd be great if you did. Don't forget to leave your comments down below.